Good morning. It's the 7th of January, 2021. Um, I actually set out to put a couple videos together uh, so far um, for this year, but it turned out that the customers were either like right there, and I don't, I don't like disrespecting my clients, so I'm not going to record a video if it's going to have you know their voice on it or reflections of them I, I, at least I try not to do that I try to be very respectful uh, so today we are headed to a longtime client and if you look at my website you'll see that there's a um, barn door well that's the same client's home uh, we installed the barn door a few years back maybe just a year ago I'm not sure um, it's been a while anyway the uh, job we're doing today is as you saw from the header image on the video and on YouTube probably is we're gonna be putting garage racking up at least that's the plan now a lot of the times these garages will have standard uh, floor joists which I'll show you here and then other times they have LVL beams which I'll show you here Usually when you have the LVL beams, you don't want to attach too much to them unless you can get up in there and add some additional structure because the LVL beams, you're only going through an inch and a half of, of wood structure there and depending on the weight people put on it, usually your screws are sticking out the other side of an LVL beam. Now when you have a, a regular floor joist uh, that's thick, you're going into the, the narrow end of it so you can use a, a three inch screw and all three inches are, are holding the... the shelf up so from what I understand there's an attic door we're gonna go up in there and look and see what kind of beams or joists uh, are up in there and we'll go from there but we're going to that job right now well I got a feeling them little Shells aren't going to be enough for all the stuff, but we got to find out what kind of floor joists are up above here. Uh, so I can't really see up there, so I'm going to use my camera with the flash on. And I can record. And then we can look at it. So it's just two by fours. Trusses. And it looks like they are probably 24 on center. I don't know what racks are made for 16 inch or 24 on center well, I'm pretty sure the floor joists are 24 on center did you get the instructions out of there I'm trying. They're all in the middle. I see okay okay so if she wants it as close to the door as possible take a measure tape out of the bag instead of climbing up there just do it from the wall out and just see if four feet comes within reason of that this way from the wall out um. Underneath of that piece of metal right there. Mm -hmm. Where's four feet? Right here. Yeah, so it's going to be too far. So we're going to have to go this side of that uh, piece of angled iron that holds up the door, the garage door opener. Mm -hmm. So she wanted as close that way as possible. We'll have to go just this side of that. So we're thinking that the C channels. It's important notice is you have to do this before anything else. Uh, six holes on each one. We've got these, but none of them have six holes. So it's not that one. But we're thinking they're probably in this these taller boxes here. Mm -hmm. 
this is the new Franklin sensor. I'm getting rid of my DeWalt wall scanner. I got rid of the Wallabot already. I'm getting rid of the uh, the other one that I got at uh, the big box store that has the single or double sensor in it that goes this way because this seems to be far more accurate. Now, the floor joists from the room above go this way. So we know there's one in the corner over there. At least there should be. And there is. So then we're going to come out this way and we're going to mark where we have them. Right there, right there, and that's the center. And this is a lot wider. I don't know what this is. I already got that one marked. And there is no more in there. I don't know what's going on above the ceiling here. It's not showing anything. The other side of the outlet is the next one. So this one's a real wide one right here. I don't know what this is. It doesn't feel like a doesn't feel like this choice there. The does there and the does there. So get me the tape measure because I'm pretty sure they're 24 inches apart and this is not one of them. This is probably detecting something up there that's a brace or something. Yep, 24 inches on the center. Okay, so I can honestly say that this instruction manual these are the C uh, C channels. Get that angle facing into where you're working. So the six holes, you're only using four of them. Get a couple of wrenches and tighten this up. Okay. All right, so what's important to understand is first thing you got to know is which way your joists are running. Ours are running from the front in, like this. So we're putting it on this wall. We want it to come out four feet, but they're running this way. These always go perpendicular to your joist. The slots always don't, they don't go against your ceiling, they always face out. So if the rack's gonna be on this side, the slots have to face that way. And it's gonna have to come up here like this, put it up against the wall and draw a line. So I got a nice straight starting point. It's 90 degrees to the wall. You have your 90 degree line. You got your 3 16 of an inch drill bit. You know where your joists are. The round holes are up. The slots are out away from your shelf. You're gonna put it up here like this, right on your line. You're gonna drill a hole there and a hole there. When you lag this in, don't tighten it down. Leave it a little bit loose so it can move around. Otherwise, you might have difficulty getting the whole shelving unit together. In fact, anything you ever put together, you never tighten it all down until it's all together. That's plumbing everything.
perpendicular. Joists are running opposite of that. Okay. This is out. Now we're going to need to measure. The next one starts 48 inches from this end. So you're going to measure from the wall 48 and a half inches, I think, to here. And that's where the next one goes. From the wall, 48 and a half inches out. Right there. And that's where the next one needs to start. So we're going to transfer that straight line. Just stick this up here. Trace it out. Put it on that line again. Trace it out. Take this, please. I'm going to move this ladder over. This one is going to start. Where that mark is. Where that mark is. So it's going to start there. Yeah. There, that bracket's it's up. 96 and a half to the inside. Oh, outside, I guess. Outside. Should be all right. You're gonna have to go a little higher. So I'm six foot, her son-in-law is six foot. He lives here. He wants to be able to walk out of here without hitting his head on it, obviously. So the highest point I'm gonna be at is here. So these are two that slide yeah. together. Put it on the inside. Uh, and slide it up so it doesn't. And slide the second one up or down so we can determine you can come down a little probably more because I'm not going to hit my head on that. I won't, you can come down one more maybe. There's a big distance between there. Try one more. I think he's going to hit his head on that unless he jumps off the steps. I think, I put it back, please. Put it back. I want to see what it's like coming in. I would go up go one. Go up one. Be safe. Go up one. And it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven free before we go to it. That's good. So what we're going to do is we're going to put them together down here. Mm -hmm. We're going to put one. You got to put one bolt on each face. So you're going to stick a bolt on this side and then you're going to put one on the other side as well. These are going to have to be tightened down before we get, before we get up there. So when you're putting these together, this small little round spot has to face down, not up. You're going to count seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, free. That one's going to go there and you're going to stick your nut and bolt through 
but you want to make sure that the bottom one is on the inside not the outside if you get this wrong and you reverse it you can't just turn these over because then the inside becomes the outside so there's one right there Let's see and then it locks in you get one two three four five six seven free and this when you pull it locks in creating that little round hole that's why the teardrop has to be down because this way all the weight is on the bolt right there and right there everywhere there's a hole that you have a bolt in now you're going to come to the other face stick it through that same little hole and put your nut on there and before she tightens it she pulls it tight like that and tightens it and the bottom one is behind the top one which means it's on the inside it drops down seven spaces one two three four five six seven that is ready for service it here. so this is going to hang way down here but we're going to put it up here just for measurement purposes. You see where it ends up here. It has to end between the lag bolts. So it has to be out here somewhere. So that means this piece that we put on has to be in the fourth hole away from the wall. If you put it here or on the outside of any lag bolt here, you stand a chance of bending this down. So it has to be between the two. We're going to go into the fourth hole here. And then what you're going to do is you're going to put this, this, it overhangs, this ledge actually goes up. You're going to lock it into one side, like that. You're going to bring it over, lock it into the other side, like that. And then we're going to make sure these are hanging squarely, and then we'll tighten them up. But I'm not going to tighten anything until we know for sure this is exactly where it's going to sit. By all rights, I should be able to move that over one and that over one. Actually, I'm going to I'm going to do that. Um, I want you I want you to move that over. Actually, I want you to move it over into the third hole instead of the second one. It's kind of a trial and error with these things because you don't you know it's you don't know exactly where everything's going to be sitting but I like the second hole better. Oh, you moved that one quick. Why did you it was quick? I did, I thought it was pretty quick. Because I want it to be as close to this back wall as I we can get it. And I can slide that over like that. That's a lot better. It's as close to the back wall as we can get it because I can't go can't go on the back side of that. They want they want the bolts that hold these down pieces together to be in between the two bolts and between the two lag bolts, not on them. If I move this any more to the right, I'll be on top of one. So right now we're between them, and over here we're between them. That's where she's going to hang. Don't up a little bit. It's like something's twisted.
like that. Problem is that you are having is these pieces here have to be perfectly, look at me, these have to be perfectly at a 90 degree angle from the ceiling. If it was over too far in the slot, mm -hmm. then these were going in crooked. It's in straight now, that's where you want it. All right, so we've got these up so far here. Now we gotta put the uh, C channels on. And they're going to go from here over. You ready for that? I can't see mine. I can see the back. Oh, mine's not. Good. Mine has to go down a little bit more though. Mine has to go down like a little bit. I gotta get a mallet. Let me go get a mallet. Okay. All right, so. Mine's even. Mine has to go down a little bit. Is it even up here? Gotta go down a little more. There she is. Now they're even. Now we're going to do the other side. Yours in? Hold on. Guess it has to be. Yeah. Let me scoot it down. Even. Now you gotta just take these here. And you see how you see how they're hooked like here? Yeah. That part goes up and over. It hooks on there and it hooks on there and slides into place. That's it. These are all hooks that you use for bicycles and yeah, stuff I saw that. after the fact. You, you hook them on. But that's my choice to have that up there. Whenever you want them hooked to. Yeah, whatever you want them hooked to. Huh? Like this? Gravity holds it. But we got to get up there and tighten all those bolts down. Originally, based on the drawings in the book, it appeared that this piece was used when you wanted to connect two shelving units together. But really, it goes here in the middle. So don't miss this step if you buy one of these safe racks because this adds a lot of durability to the center of the shelf and really makes it rigid. So this is held on by four bolts and it fits right into the track here and those cutouts fit around the top lip. And the instructions show that you use this piece when you're connecting multiple ones together because it's supposed to brace the middle of this when you add an ex as an extension but a way you put them together but that's not really the case. The book tells you one thing, but the picture shows you're doing this. So. You have to use two wrenches to make sure that one's tight because the impact doesn't have a deep well socket, so it won't get it from that side. I do have a socket set in the truck, but just make sure you tighten that really tight. <laughs> 